Welcome back to the Kirby Sports Center. St. Francis comes away with a 69-62 win with head coach Fran O'Hanlon and our player of the game. Here is Adam Dobrolowski. Very much, John. Is Adam Dobrolowski here with Coach Fran O'Hanlon and Coach? It was a hard-fought game back and forth. I knew it didn't go down the stretch as you would like it to go. But your thoughts overall on how the team played? Well, we certainly fought hard, uh, Adam. We uh, we just. Um, we didn't execute at the end. We didn't get the tough rebounds that they got. We didn't make the tough shots. We fumbled it a couple times. And uh, they executed at the end. I mean, they're, they're the defending champs of the NEC, and they played like it. And we didn't play, uh, I don't think we played up to our capabilities, but you got to give them credit for that. You know, they, they really got in our stuff. They made it hard for us, and uh, they, they executed. This was certainly a game where you guys had to make an adjustment inside. They were giving a lot of attention outside. You were able to get some backdoor cuts, especially early work it inside. What were some of the positives that you saw in the team communication to get that inside and have an efficient shooting game for much of the game? Well, the the positives are we got off to a good, we didn't get off to a good start. We got back in the game at the end of the half. I thought for the most part our defense was pretty good the whole game. We just didn't do a good job offensively of executing uh, our game plan and uh, you know we, we just have to get better. Team-wise, it was a hard fault game rebounding-wise. What are some of the improvements you've seen over the last two games on the boards? Well, we've been doing a better job on the boards. I mean, today we lost by four on the boards, but it's better than what we have been doing. Uh, when we can battle on the boards, then we have a better chance of being in games. What are some of the adjustments the teams are going to make? The team is going to make over the next few days, heading up to the next battle. Um, we're just going to have to regroup and talk about some of the things that we did not do well because uh, Cornell is playing very well. They're undefeated at home. And uh, they're going to play like that. They're going to get up uh, and really defend and, and push the tempo. And, and we've got to be able to do a better job. Best of luck in Ithaca, Coach. Thank you, Adam. And now here with our player of the game, Nathaniel Musters, a career high in rebounds with eight. Nate, just your thoughts overall on, on how the game was inside and what you had to do to fight hard and get those boards. Uh, to echo Coach's sentiments, I feel like we really battled on the boards. So we did a good job of that. Uh, we probably have to contain them a little bit better in terms of some of their post-ups. Uh, number 15 was really get, got it going through his left hand. Um, but yeah, we just got to keep battling on the boards and look forward to our next game at Cornell. You have, I believe, 15 rebounds in your last two games. Do you feel like you're starting to hit your stride this season? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's something that I've been trying to focus on, uh, especially looking at our first couple of games. We really didn't do well on the boards. And I felt like as I said, I really had um, something of an onus to try and do uh, a little bit better in that area. Uh, something that I try to focus on, especially in practice and coming out here into our game. So I'm really happy with my performance the last couple of games. Still, still going forward, could do better, but it's good the last couple. Good job today, Nate, and best of luck moving forward at Cornell. Thank you very much. And now we'll send it back to John. Thank you, Adam. Terrific job with the coach and with Nathaniel Musters. There you see uh, a, a look at some of the final statistics. And the one that jumps out at me is um, the three-point shooting, obviously, you would think that those numbers would be uh, inverted. You would think that Lafayette would be the team shooting eight for 19. But again, that's a, a, an illustration of what Coach O'Hanlon was talking about when he says that uh, you got to give credit to St. Francis. They got up in our stuff. They really did a good job all night long of running Lafayette off the three-point line. There were very few open three-point opportunities. And I think in the end, uh, one of the adjustments that Coach will make and this team will learn from is that when teams do take that away, you have to adjust. You've got to run your offense better and uh, do what it takes to uh, uh, you know, to create those outside shots. You've got to have balance. Uh, this offense is built on balance between inside out. And uh, Adam, your point uh, was well taken. They did a good job around the basket today, but St. Francis did an effective job of running them off that three-point line, which is a staple of the Lafayette offense. And I think that's why you, you heard Coach O'Hanlon say, really show frustration in saying that the, the team wasn't able to execute the game plan he wanted. Two of 13 shooting from three. Now they did falter down the stretch, get under 50% shooting, but that uh, 24 of 52 from the field, that's 46.2%. That is overall how the team wants it. Free throw shooting got a little bit down at the end as well. 12 of 18 at a point they were around 80%, but then down the stretch, I believe one of their final four uh, from the free throw line. N now, individually speaking, another good game from Nick Lindner, 18 points, but he misses the front end of a pair of one and ones and could have got to 20 points for the seventh time in 11 games. You also had three other players in double figures, Matt Klinuski, 13, Bryce Scott, and Monty Boykins, 11 apiece. 
John, what are some of the other things that you have to say to close things out here? Well, you know, Lafayette has historically been a great free throw shooting team. Now you look at 12 for 18, you say it's not disastrous, but what was atypical is in the last two minutes, their numbers were well under 50%. That's where Lafayette usually salts games away. They either uh, uh, give themselves a chance to win at the end or they just seal uh, a, you know, a lead that they have. That was not the case tonight. That's unusual, that's an anomaly. I don't think you'll see that all year long. St. Francis did what they had to do, give them credit. Lafayette will get better. So Lafayette now 2-5 and five on the season. Their next game at Cornell, that'll be Saturday, a 2 p.m. game. And then Lafayette will be back home here at Kirby next Wednesday against Fairleigh Dickinson. The game will be on here on the Patriot League Network at 7 p.m. The next broadcast for basketball on the Patriot League Network will be Friday women's basketball against St. Francis Brooklyn. But one final time, the score here, St. Francis Terriers 69, Lafayette Leopards 62, a back and forth game, but the Terriers close it out and the Leopards lose their first game at home. For John Leone, I'm Adam Dorovolsky signing out here from the Kirby Sports Center. Have a good evening, everybody.